Okay. now okay so I gotta figure out my controls here I don't really know okay so I don't really know what I haven't played this game in a while so I'm not really sure what the point is or like what my goal is but I do know that I think there's like Baby Bowser, and he's... I don't know. How do I pick this up? He's, like, trying to paint the city. And I gotta keep it clean. Oh. Okay, so that does something. Where was that, though? Alright, what's up, people? Um, so, Ethan, I'm assuming you're on. What is, what's going on with your quarantine situation? Oh, really? Your whole family? Um, yeah, that sucks, dude. I thought this game would be fun to stream, but I really don't know what to do. I gotta figure out what I'm doing first, I think. Let's see, okay, it says... Secret life of a daily thing. Okay, let's exit this area. I don't know what I'm doing here. I mean, okay, so if it's basically just just you, Ethan, watching, that's fine. <laughs> I'll, um, might as well tell, like, I don't know, I'm trying to think. Something interesting I can talk about. Um, I'm not really sure. Okay, at first I'm just going to figure out what I'm doing, and then... I'll think of something interesting to talk about. Okay, let's see here. Jump, B to go up, to flip, to gate, flip to gate, okay. Okay, I can remember, that's jumping. And that does that, and B doesn't really do anything. 
Okay, let's get up here. Okay, now we gotta jump. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Hey, Kenzie. <laughs> I like. Do you wanna like? I don't know. Do something <laughs> to help me make this more interesting. Cause I'm just kind of playing this. I don't really know what I'm doing. Yeah. Do you like a story you want to tell? My what? Oh yeah, okay, okay. Uh, so, speaking of sickness, you said your dad is sick. Recently, I like went to the hospital, so I'll tell that story. Um, I don't really know like how it all started per se. I think I was sick, like, but uh, basically, I started fasting, right? I don't know if your church is doing the 20, 21 day fast, but we started, my church or my dad's church is, and so is my church in Indianapolis. So basically, if you don't know what that is, we just like don't eat for 21 days, and instead of eating, we like pray. Uh, I'm sure so. I I know you. I'm sure you know what fasting is. Um, but when we were, um, you, and usually it like it's pretty normal for me. So usually I'll like, I don't know, like I, I usually fast like every year. Um, so I'm not usually really worried about it or anything. Okay, now I gotta get across. Um, okay, I made it. I made it. Um, but usually, I find that um, like I can fast for a couple days, no problem. Like it's really just a matter of like if I can like last not eating, right? Which is only really only the ever the only problem problem is just like I get really hungry and then yeah and then basically I end up failing my fast because I'm just like not hungry so anyway so trying to honor the Lord I'm fasting I'm, I, my plan is like I'm gonna fast for three days so I don't eat anything uh, for like I think it was like from midnight to like or maybe from like eight o'clock to like eight o'clock the next day so the next day I'm at Kenzie's house my wife's parents house and we are, um, I think she's just downstairs talking to her parents because she hadn't seen them for a while. And then I'm just upstairs with her brother and his, her brother's playing Rocket League. So I felt like pretty lethargic. And I was just sitting there doing nothing, basically, like sitting on my phone. And like, you know, I, I don't know. I felt for some reason I felt comfortable. I was like, like man, I'm really comfortable. Like I'm, just, I don't have any energy, but like I, I like how I feel. But uh, I don't understand why I felt like so good about it. But anyway, I ended up. We ended up leaving, and then I'm trying to think what happened. We ended up leaving, and uh, because I was so tired, I was like, "Kenzie, I think you should just drive, right?" And so while we're driving, I'm like, "I'm like, you know, I just feel like so peaceful. <laughs> like I just feel like so at peace right now." So I'm sitting there, feeling at peace, driving, and then um, I mean, I really, I really have no idea how to get out of this stupid cage. Uh, I was sitting there driving, and then all of a sudden, I just, the whole world just started going black. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, I cannot, like, things are like, things are getting blurry, right? And I'm, get, I'm getting dizzy, and I'm like, man, I don't, I don't know if I feel too good, right? But, like, I didn't really have a, a reason to be, like, not feeling good. I'm like, I, it's only been 24 hours since I stopped eating. Uh, so I'm like, it's probably nothing, is what I was thinking. So, um, I kind of just bank on that thought. I'm like, probably nothing. And uh, we continue to drive. And I'm like, Kenzie, I'm kind of dizzy. Like, can you drive, drive so fast? Right? So I tell her not to drive so fast. Uh, and then right after I tell her not to drive so fast, I just start, things like literally start going black. I'm like, what is going on? And the next thing I know, I am completely blind. And I'm like, Kenzie, like, goodness, I cannot see. So Kenzie starts freaking out because she's not good with like, she's not good with stuff like that. So, my wife basically just starts freaking out, 
Oh my gosh. How do I get out of this slime? Anyway, she's not good at that stuff. So, I, um, she starts freaking out. She's swerving all over the road. And, um, basically, she gives me a mint, right? So, she gives me the mint, a couple mints. And I think the reason she gave me the mint is because she thought, like, maybe I have, like, low blood sugar or something. So, she gave me the mint. And then, I basically, like, started the sea again. But then I broke out into these cold sweats. So, then she takes me to, um... McDonald's, right? I'm like, I need something to eat. Takes me to McDonald's. I eat the McDonald's. And I get like a cheeseburger and like fries or something. And then I'm like, literally like blind. I'm not blind anymore, but like, how do I explain? Basically, I eat the cheeseburger, right? And I start to feel better. But I don't, I just don't feel good. You know? But uh, anyway. So, I thought I was fine after that, and then, also, if you know how to beat, if someone knows how to beat this level, like, where, I, where I'm supposed to go, please let me know, because I literally am, like, not sure. Um, and anyway, so, I, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, like, okay, well, I just passed out, I just had this McDonald's, um, and I, I don't, I never eat fast food, so I didn't feel very good. So, I was like, I'm probably going to be fine. So, I go home, and I go to sleep, and, like, I just started, like, questioning my health. I don't know if you've ever done that, but, like, I literally just started freaking out about my health. I'm like, I mean, I cannot trust my health anymore. And I basically just started, like, freaking out about, like, whether or not I'm health like healthy. So, the next day, um, Kenzie goes to work. And I'm like, I stay home. I like I, I don't, I don't go to. I have, I call off work because like, I'm worried I'm gonna pass out again. So the whole day I'm kind of just like, feeling really lethargic, tired. Um, and I guess I don't know. Long story short, I um, started feeling dizzy again, and I started freaking out about how dizzy I was. I'm like, this is not good. So I, I was afraid I was gonna pass out, and I was home alone. So. I, I just wasn't sure like how to deal with that so I called my grandpa and he like uh, how do you say it? he like drove me to an, it's called a, a immediate care and I wasn't sure if I should go to the hospital or not but um, it's basically kind of like an emergency room but instead of an emergency room it's you just go there and they like it's like a regular doctor's office basically so like a, imagine getting an emergency general checkup so I get the emergency general checkup. Oh, I think I found the thing that I'm looking for in this level. Okay, my God, how do I destroy this thing? I did it. I got a blue coin. Then visit the boot, the boathouse. Okay, same me. Um, yeah. So then, um. I'm at the emergency general doctor, and then they mention they take like they do a couple things to me. They like check my blood sugars, and then they check like I don't know like my freaking blood pressure, and they like hook me up to this machine or whatever. And they're like, "You're completely fine, but you're pale and you look sick." So because of that, you need to go to the emergency room. So go to the emergency room. Uh, I get my grandma to come, and she takes me to the emergency room, because my grandpa had left, because he kind of thought I was being ridiculous. So, my uh, grandma takes me to the emergency room, and then, I think, use a ground pound to flip through the gate. Okay, I know how to do that. Uh, and then, anyway. Oh my gosh. This level is so hard, I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, and then, she takes me to the emergency room, and, oh my gosh. Alright, give me a second. I'm really bad at talking and playing video games at the same time, like, I can't think. Which is basically, like, the whole point of a stream, so if I can't do this, then it's not gonna last very long. Alright, let's jump. Okay, I made it. Alright, so, while I wait for this elevator, 
I'm in the emergency room, and I get in there, and oh my lord. Oh my gosh. I'm like dying. If this game doesn't work out, I'm probably gonna play a different game. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I feel like the they just hooked me up to a like not an MRI. What is it called? The UV. Help hook me to UV. I'm getting an IV. Yeah, IV. And then they're hooking up. They're like pumping fluids into my blood, and they're basically. After they test my blood and everything, they're like, yeah, you're completely fine. There's nothing wrong with you at all. I'm like, well, then why did I pass out? And they're like, well, we don't know why you passed out. So, like, what's going on? And they basically told me, they're like, well, you're a little dehydrated, but, like, there's nothing wrong with you. So, like, like we can't tell you what's wrong with you. Like, there, like there's, no, there's nothing to fix. So, I finally get out of the ER. Oh, my lord, please. No. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna die. Uh, anyway, they they basically just I, I find, they basically tell me there's nothing wrong. So my wife picks me up from the ER, and I guess I should say this: like I feel like in the ER, every a lot of people in the ER are very like. Everyone in the over, I don't want to like stereotype or generalize, but like all the people in the ER, like patients, were like overweight. Like your weight has a like really affects your health. I could you could definitely tell that. So keep that in mind, I guess. Um, also, doctors and nurses are like superheroes. Like they literally like they're all like super fit, and they like know how to save your life. So, like, man, like, I don't know. I was very impressed by the doctors and nurses in there. Um, just by, like, I don't know. They just seem like they know what they're doing. Uh, and anyway, so I leave the ER. Um, my wife picks me up. And um, my, my wife stays home with me the next day. So I'm at home. And, oh, here we go. Here's something. What should I, how do I do this? Step on the guy's thing. Pulling on a present B. Anyway, the next day, she um, stays home with me. And I felt completely fine all day. But then on Thursday, I wake up and I'm like super... Like, on Thursday... Oh, oh, you know what it was? On Wednesday, I didn't get enough sleep at all. Like, I was just like, and when I don't get enough sleep, I get super anxious. Holy shoot. It says pull on by pressing B. Um, and anyway, I was like super nervous, and then, um, I was like super anxious because I didn't get enough sleep. And... Although there was nothing necessarily wrong with me, I just f kept feeling like there was something wrong with me. So it turns out, after this long, like, over exasperated story, I was just having panic attacks. Which I, I don't know what a panic attack is. In fact, in high school, I feel like we used to make fun of people who, were ha who had panic attacks. And we we're just like, you're just acting crazy. You're just like, you're just silly. But, like, it turns out, like, really, like, you can panic and. Well, let me explain what it feels like. Basically, you can't breathe. Like, your whole body just thinks... You feel like you're dying. And you can't breathe. And you just feel like... I don't know, you just feel like it's over. Like, like you, like you literally, I literally could not breathe. Like, I was really sitting there thinking, like, controlling my breathing. Um, I'm, trying, I'm trying to figure out how... I feel like I explained this badly. Basically, okay, basically, the reason I went to the ER... The first day is because I was having a panic attack. So that panic attack is what made me feel as awful as I did. So I wasn't actually sick. I was just freaking out because of my health. 
So then the next day, I felt fine, but then on Thursday, I didn't get enough sleep, which caused my anxiety to be bad, which gave me another panic attack. So that's that's where we are in this story. So now, I, now I'm figuring out what's going on on Thursday, but I don't know how to deal with it, right? So then here comes Friday. So Friday, I feel fine the entire day, which is good. And then Kenzie comes home, and I'm like, okay, okay, good, good. We're going to go on a date. Like, everything's going to be fine. I'm not like... We're gonna things are gonna be normal now. Well, obviously, this week of like this all happened during the weeks after like you know the Capitol riots, okay, which were which are cause for concern. Uh, and anyway, one of my old friends gets online with me, and you know he's a good pal, well well intentioned, like there's nothing wrong, like he's a good guy. What I'm trying to tell you, but he gets online and he starts rattling off like conspiracy theories right and he starts telling me he's like the chinese faked trump's concession speech and like i don't know he's like going down the line of like conspiracies and like he's like i don't know if he like fully believes any of these things but like he basically just telling me so anyway me being like recovering from like a panic anxiety like attack week start to overthink this stuff and then Anyway, we go to Home Depot, and in the middle of Home Depot, I can't breathe anymore. So, <laughs> I have to take me home, and I'm just, like, sitting in my bed, like, trying to breathe. And, yeah. And, and I called my dad, and it turns out, like, it turns out that it was just, like, he told me that it was a panic attack. So I, I already kind of knew, but he kind of confirmed and told me the same thing happened to him. Anyway, I felt better. But that's why I went to the ER. Any questions? <laughs> Blooper surfing surfer. So now I kind of realize there's arrows that tell me where to go. After I do this one, I'll probably end the stream. But anyway, that was my fun experience in the ER and like having panic attacks, trying to figure out what's wrong with my health. So, um, what is this right here? Oh, wow, look at this. So anyway, uh, I'm trying to think of anything else that's happened since then. I think the main thing that I got from the whole experience is that I pretty much learned... Woohoo, you want to go for a ride, bud? I pretty much learned, like, um... I feel like I learned a couple things about, like, other people with anxiety. Like, before I had panic attacks I was like I really always kind of like thought people who had panic attacks were just like making it up or like it was in their head but like no you really feel like you're dying so it's like a interesting cause for like interesting cause for thought like I don't know next time you like think to yourself like are they really like crazy like are they really triggered oh that that's the big that's one thing I really like I learned like oh frick like you used to be, I feel like when I was like 16 we used to say things like, oh, you're getting triggered, like, you're so, like, what are you talking about, you're getting triggered, right? And to a certain extent, like, I don't know, like, you can't, like, get mad at people for triggering you, I feel like, if they don't know what they're doing, like, it's not their fault, like, they don't know they're triggering you, but I definitely would, like, like, now, whenever, whenever I start thinking about, like, my health, and, like, passing out, it, like, t triggers me, like, it's, like, the, the weirdest thing on the planet, like, I start to breathe heavy, and I'm like, what is going on? Right? And that basically just happens every time. So, like... Um, and, like, if someone talks about stuff, like, it makes me... Like, like there's just, like, a trigger complex now that I have to deal with. Which is fine. Like, I could deal with it. It's getting better. 
but like you know i can understand people who've had like severe trauma saying that they feel triggered especially you know with the internet everyone like sits on the internet and like they think terrible things like what i realized is is like there's like an echo chamber of thought like on twitter and different places and you know twitter is not really representative of like what the whole world right but that doesn't stop people from twitter feeling like it is so if you're on twitter and you're seeing like i don't know you see people like freaking out about every little thing like okay here's a good example right people are afraid to like send their kids out because they don't want their kids to get molested right or something like that so they're afraid of sending their kids out in the streets and playing there's not really a good reason to be afraid of that like statistically that never happens but every single time something like that does happen it's all over facebook and or twitter so then everyone just kind of thinks to themselves like like yeah like this is a serious risk or just they feel that way they're they're afraid of it so then when in reality we live in a world where like if you send your kids out and play they could probably play outside every single day all the time and there would never be an issue all of a sudden now they feel like they're living in a world where if like they feel as if they're living in a more dangerous world than they actually are right and that's not good because um that impairs it just kind of impairs the way how do i grab onto this thing it just impairs the way you like you live your life like it just like kind of like cripples you um so yeah going back to the whole anxiety thing so i feel like when you're on the internet right like okay you know, we live in America, right? And America is pretty decent country. Um, but obviously, you know, we have our issues. On social media, like I'm, like I'm saying, those issues are amplified. So then there's people who spend a lot of their time on social media and then they're really worried about, oh, just various things that are going on. And then those fears turn into, like, consistent anxieties. And then everyone's like got all this anxiety are you serious got this consistent anxieties and then i don't know people trigger them like you know like you spend all your time thinking about how people hate you when they don't really but you just see like you kind of amplify evidence that people hate you like see all this evidence on the internet of people saying they don't like you and then eventually you start to believe that the whole world hates you and then, um, yeah, then you get triggered, right? And then we have to like, you know, cater to your feelings, which is okay. Oh, it's not, it's not okay, but it's like, at least understand now, now that I, I, I get triggered by like health things, right? Also, I'm obviously rambling right now, but like, I might as well, while I'm rambling, I might as well go into, like, first of all, I cannot find this thing at all. But, like, while I'm rambling, I might as well uh, just, like, give some reason for some other concerns. I'll give you, because uh, right now I'm kind of just, like, speaking, right, like, generalizing. I do have some relatively, like, solid examples from my own life. So, in my own life, one thing that Christians, I feel like, do, because my dad's a pastor. So, like, one thing Christians do is they repeatedly say, oh, there's the pole. I just jumped on the pole. Christians repeatedly say all the time, like my whole life, oh, shoot, that we're living it, like in the end of the world. And I think there's even a statistic, like in America, 40% of Christians think that the end of the world will happen before we like die, which I suppose is possible, but... You know, it's kind of a bold statement to say, like, yeah, like, this is the end of the world. So, you know, being told this my entire life, and I my, I have been told this my entire life. Like, I've genuinely been told this by my peers and my, my parents and stuff, that this is, like, the last generation, essentially, right? Now that I'm older, I have to cope with that and, like, kind of, like, figure out whether or not that's real. So... I feel like me and my friends now have all gotten to this age where like now like we're starting to I don't know live real life because before 
for this age, I feel like you're not really aware of what's going on in the world. Like, you are, but, like, there's a difference. I can just remember a stark difference between the election in 2016 and the election in 2020. Like, I don't know how to explain exactly, but, like, in 2020, I just feel like, or 2016, it just feel like everything was a joke. Like, it didn't really matter. So now, of course, it matters. Oh, get up. So, like I said, everything matters. I already have this one. So now, of course, everything, like, actually does matter. And, uh, you know, when things matter, then your concerns for the world, like, you don't just, you don't really brush them off like you do you used to in high school, basically. So, back to high school, when people told me the end of the world, I didn't really have to worry about it. But now, I'm married. So, like, if the world ends, like, well, that's not, that's like my whole life. Um... There's, like a, like there's a lot more impact on a, on a high schooler like losing his life and then like an adult who is like fully functioning. So going forward with the uh, the thought process here, basically uh, basically I've noticed me and my friends have had a lot of I guess it would be called like rapture anxiety and, like everyone's worried about like the end of the world more than I can remember in high school and I think there's two reasons for that one I already said growing up but then the other reason too is because Christians when Donald Trump was elected you know I hate to, I don't want to like get talk about politics and stuff oh shoot I fell um but when he got elected regardless of if it's right or wrong or not like Christians were saying that his election was like the only thing preventing like the antichrist like, like seriously. So, anyway, here we are. I think I almost got blown off by that, like, tornado guy. Um, but now every Christian, like, kind of had this thought in their head, like, yeah, when Donald Trump gets unelected, that's, like, the end of, uh, that's the end of the world, because he's, like, the only thing stopping. Like, for some reason, we had this, like, savior complex about him, like, he was going to stop the one world governments and stuff like that. When, like, I don't know, I'll get to my thoughts on that in a sec. But point is, he left office, and now we have all this anxiety because this, like, the only, what we've been told is the only, oh my lord, I fell off. You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. All right, I'm going back. Um, yeah, the only thing stopping the end of the world is now it's gone, and then on top of that, we're old, and everything is more stressful to us in general. So, um, that then leads you to overthinking a lot. So then you gotta think. I I just got married. Like, I went through a lot of life changes, right? I'm about to graduate college. I just got married. Like I moved out of my house. I'm living on my own, right? Like this is not an easy time in my life, as far as like mental changes, which is fine. But you know, if you add the fact, if you add like this like impending view that the whole world's gonna end just makes it worse. So, I sit in here thinking like, the world's gonna end, um, and I have to cope with that, and now I'm coping with that, and then all my friends are coping with it too, which just makes you feel like it's even more real. And then, and then of course you, you come, you go through, you have all these protests, wildfires, you know, you, there's just a lot going on, right? And COVID too, which makes it even worse. And then, because I didn't even get to COVID, right? And then all this anxiety builds up in your head and then to the point where it's like I wouldn't say like I had I don't know if I had anxiety attacks about the end of the world but I wouldn't say it's an unfair thing to say I definitely I definitely know a lot of people who have so with all that being said um, when people now talk about like the end of the world or the rapture like in fact all it takes is someone has to say like rapture Right, and then it'll like trigger me, like, and I'll get all nervous and anxiety because I have to t I'll have to talk myself out of it. Like, okay, it's not really the end of the world, and it's not really like like this really isn't. And like, I'll still get to live my whole life. I have to like convince myself of that because my whole life, everyone's been t spending all their time trying to convince me the opposite. And I, and they have reasons, and I'll explain. I can explain this, but I just think that like the whole point of this whole story was basically to like explain 
the trigger thing. So now, after having all this anxiety, right, of something that might not even be true, like, right, it's not even a reality. It's just something that I've been, it's been built up in my head by the people around me. Like, this echo chamber of thought of, No, 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 yes. Let's go, that was close. What is this? Okay, so then you just have this, you just have this echo chamber of thought and it really builds like genuine anxiety. Like it builds a genuine fear in your head. Like whether that is warranted or not, I don't know. But um, that's how it is, you know? Oh, okay, okay. I'm getting kind of nervous here because this is like. I'm like really high up here right now. <gasps> I found it. Let's go. So of course I feel like the of course I feel like the world's ending and then people say things like you go like for example I went to church on Sunday and then our church our guy our pastor says you know the Lord's coming soon right which in the past didn't didn't mean anything to me I'm like sure like you're coming soon whatever but now like I'm dealing with the, the consequences of the world so I'm freak, freaking out like the world's ending and what am I gonna do I have no idea so. Yeah, so now, like, you know, it triggers me. So now I have to, like, I, I go through this whole panic set. I have to think to myself, okay, like, is the world ending? Why is the world ending? Why do people believe the world's ending, right? And then you just go through this whole thing, right? But, I don't know. Eventually, you have to learn to deal with it. But, anyway, I guess what it, in the beginning I was trying to say, like, maybe don't, like, if people are being triggered, you know, just because you don't think what they're worried about has any like real like relevance doesn't mean that like in their head they haven't built up something real like for example like people who are anorexic like they genuinely like maybe i maybe i don't know if know enough about anorexia but i feel like people who are anorexia like like when i had that panic attack like i was afraid to eat so like a lot of people who are anorexic like if it if it's anything like how i was experiencing things then I imagine how do I get over there if it's anything like how I was experiencing things then my guess is that um, they're like literally afraid to eat if they can't right which is I don't know like you still gotta kind of work through it and I, I'm not at a place in my life where like I feel like I can't work through the things that I deal with I, it's not chronic it's just like circumstantial but I would definitely make the argument that like I don't know I guess I'm just saying that I understand like where people are coming from I guess if they're saying that they have severe anxiety and stuff where as a kid I probably couldn't have I probably couldn't have related on the same level like I didn't understand what, what they were talking about anyway so Okay, if you're watching this stream and you're thinking to yourself like, okay, well this guy just talked about the end of the world for like, Christians think it's the end of the world for like an hour here. So like, what does he, like why do they think that? Um, I actually don't really know why Christians think that because I've been really like going through like the Bible myself and like thinking to myself like, what actually reasons do we have to believe that this is the end? And if you really break it down, it just comes down to one thing. Like, beforehand, in the in the end times, or whatever, in the Bible, the country Israel is in there, like in the end. They talk about Israel and stuff. So until recently, obviously after World War II, Israel was a nation again, right? So, that being said, I think I have to go up this tower. That being said, now that Israel's a country, Basically, everyone's kind of been watching and waiting, thinking to themselves, like, okay, now the end is ready to come because Israel's country, which has merit to it. Uh, the problem is, is that I feel like there's a lot of, like, prophecies in the Bible, like, well, knowledge will increase or uh, there will be scoffers, right? 
or people will be like not Christian, right? Uh, and like people look at the world and they're like, well, that's getting worse. But I don't know if it is. Like I think since World War II it has, maybe in the United States. But like I don't like China. Like China, like one percent of China and one percent of Japan, one percent of Russia, are Christians. You know, like Europe hardly has like is mostly atheists now. Like there's not really a lot of like Christian Christianity anyway, and there really hasn't been. Or there is a lot of Christianity, but not in the way that I don't know a lot of. I feel like people like use the United States having a lot of Christians as evidence for the fact that like now that there's less Christianity in the United States, that Christianity is ending or something like that. So with that being said, I think if you'd like look in the perspective of the whole world, I just don't see, I could I definitely see what you're saying about the United States, but I just don't think that it means much more than that. And that's really all it is. It's just like, this is a st change that's happening in the United States. Perhaps. You know, this is like what the Bible's talking about. But like, I don't see any reason to necessarily like bet on it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. You don't, need to you, don't need to be, you don't need to believe me or be convinced by me, but that's basically what my thoughts are on it. Anyway. The conclusion of everything I've said so far, like... I don't know. Anxiety's real. And you should try to, like... But at the same time, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to, like, promote oversensitivity. And that's, I think, a big problem right now. People are too sensitive to get their healing, feelings hurt. Like, a joke is just a joke, you know? But it's I understand you're getting triggered by it, but, like, you can't blame the other people. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll drop it. It's kind of a serious topic. Anyway, how do I freaking do this last star? I have no idea how to get it. Okay, it's up there. Okay, it's up there. Alright. I'm going to focus on getting to the top of this, so I, uh, cause I really don't know what I'm doing. I think if I just... I think I can climb these. I can't. Here, let's try this. Oh, shoot. Is going on here? After this star, I'll probably end the stream. Um, so I enjoy talking to a lot of you guys. Enjoy sharing my thoughts. Just wanted to do a good morning stream. Uh, I've been learning how to stream, so like, just wanted to test a lot of my. Uh, what do you call it? You know what I realized? There was a jetpack at the end of the last thing, wasn't there? There was a giant jet. So if I go use that, I bet you I could use that to get up to the top. So that's what I'm going to do. But it's one of the. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to test out streaming. So let me know if. I'll probably do more streams. Generally, I'll do them with my friends, though. I don't like, I don't like to stream by myself. And it's like kind of a awkward skill to have. Like you gotta like be good at like talking to nobody. <laughs> and usually, people use like Twitch and stuff. I don't know. Stream is weird. Interesting. I, actually, let's talk about that. Okay, so I don't really understand how people watch streamers. Like, okay, I'm, I know I'm sitting here streaming, right? But like for the most part, in general, like I see that you see thousands of people watching XQ or CQC or XQC or whatever his name is on Twitch, and like, I have no idea how people watch him. Like sometimes I get like, I like watching Ludwig, or I like watching um, I think Doctor Disrespect, you know, puts on a pretty good show sometimes. But for the most part, most of these streamers they're just sitting there, playing, you know. And I do get I get like if someone's better than you, like someone's really good. A pro or something, and you want to watch them play, but nobody watches pros. People watch like regular gamers, which is fine, but it's like, why? Okay, let's get out of here.
So now I'm streaming, and I'm like, like I'm sure the people watching this right now are like people I know. So like it's a little different. But like if you don't know someone, like why are you watching them play? Oh man. Okay, let's try this. Let's try this. Okay, let's try doing it like this. Okay, I made it. All right, final boss. Oh lord. All right. This is the highlight of the stream right here. Yeah, I can see that like the entertainment aspect. I just like in general. I mean, I understand okay, sometimes you don't want to play video games. Just like out of all the forms of entertainment, like we're gonna watch a mediocre player play. I do like okay, so one thing that has like changed my opinion on streaming a little bit is I watch Ludwig play. And uh, Ludwig is really good at you know, he tells stories and he's like really good at it. So I mean yesterday I was trying to like um, have my own like crack at that. Oh gee, this is hard. Oh, okay, okay. How do I do that? How am I not getting it? There we go, there we go. Okay. Alright, alright. I was watching Lugplay. He's pretty good at telling stories, I feel like. He's like, he, he just like sets you up. Sets up the story really well. You know? And I would like to be better at that. No, I'm freaking dead. I'll get it. Are you kidding me? Okay. And anyway, I can see how that would make a stream entertaining. If I have to go all the way back and like I can't just go. <sighs> Where are they gonna start me? Oh my gosh, no. Alright. Alright. This is this is the finale of the stream here. Getting the start. So after the star, I'm, I'm ending the stream. Yeah, I get that. T more than 20 minutes of gameplay is kind of like, if that's all it is. I do get Let's Play. So back in the day, I used to watch uh, Tabuscus uh, Let's Plays. And I used to like, like watching them play Skyrim. Which, I don't see anyone really doing Let's Plays anymore. I mean, sometimes people do. But like... I feel like the only time they do is if it's like a JRPG or something. Um, like something like kind of different. And there hasn't really been enough story play. I guess people did a Let's Plays of like Last of Us 2 and stuff like that. So I guess that's not true. And now that people are live streaming, they probably just live stream their Let's Plays. Tabuscus, like the Tabuscus, like Skyrim Let's Play though, was like awesome. But I was a kid though. Like the older people watch Let's Plays. I don't know. I haven't had a chance. Like, I don't get into story games anymore. It's hard to get into story games when you're an older person. Like, it's really easy when you're a kid, I feel like, because, like... Well, I'm not sure what the difference is. Like, it's not that you have more time in your hand. It's just, like... I don't know. Like, your life is already a story when you're older. I know a lot of people do get into them when they're older, but, like, for me, I just feel like... like I'm already living somewhat of an adventure. Like, why do I play an adventure game, right? So, like, this this game's different because you're doing things, it's creative. And actually, that's a pretty good point. I find, like, people, for some reason, like, every game that comes out, like, they so focus on realism. And I know my friend Gabriel, like, loves realism in games. But, like, I just don't get it. Like, you know, you're a game creator. You can make, you can do anything you want. You can make the sky purple. Like, you can make trees that no one's ever seen before. Right, but instead we just make things look normal, like how, how they look in real life. There's no reason, there's, like no, there's no need. We could like literally make the coolest, the coolest like worlds and like 
be extremely creative. If, if anyone's watching and doesn't know, I own a board game. Because I know there's like three viewers right now, so I don't, I don't know who's watching. But like, if, even if you don't know, I own a board game company, I guess you would call it. Uh, and basically, uh, I, I don't know, the, thing, the, the issue with like board games, like if you're, like the, the board games people play, there's nothing that really stops someone from just doing the same thing as you, right? So like Dungeons and Dragons came out. And then there's like alternate versions, I think like Pathfinder or something like that. Or like, I don't know if Warhammer is similar. There's like alternate universes that people get their get themselves into with similar gameplay. Anyway, I find that what I do is... Oh shoot. Anyway, I find, I find that like, so if I make a board game, there's nothing I can really do to protect my, my game. Like, as far as mechanics and stuff go. So, there's nothing stopping someone from making a better version of my game. So, the goal is, is to use the universe that I've created. And I think that's something I've always wanted to do, like, as a kid. I always looked up to, like, Stan Lee or... Uh, I didn't, like, wasn't in the Super Marvel superheroes. But I looked up to him, like, in what he did as far as, like, creating a universe. Oh my gosh, I fell. Anyway, so I finally want to do that. To do that, like start my create my own universe, like George Lucas, like Star Wars, like different planets, like whatever it is. So that's kind of like my main goal with Gatekeeper. Like I like the game that I've created, but like you know, I don't think it's a perfect game or anything. You know, and I don't expect anyone else to think it's perfect, but I do think that I could create more games and more things with the same characters and like create a universe. And I think it'd be pretty cool. So like. One, one thing that would be super awesome is if it, like, so, like, say Gatekeeper pops off, right, whether, whether or not it does, I don't know. Say it pops off, and then I, um, uh, I could, what, what do you call it? I could, like, create, like, a mobile version of the game, which is, like, would be pretty fun. Um, uh, but then, using the same characters, let's go, let's go. I freaking died. Using the same characters, you could create so many games. Like, I love Mario. I love that Mar what, like what Mario does with like Mario Kart and Super Smash Brothers and like all this freaking stuff. Like, I don't understand why there's not more franchises like that. And I would like to make this a franchise similar. You know, I think it would be a little more edgy, a little more hardcore, but it'd be just as creative. I feel like just as many colors, um, just as many like, I don't know, just fun things to do. And it'd be super fun to make, like, my own version of Mario Kart and, like, my own version of, like, whatever, you know? Hello. What's up? Oh my gosh, dude, it's impossible. Um, I'm sure we would. Steven, do you want to go to Giordano's with my, with my family later on? Yeah, I'll go to Giordano's. Yes. Did you hear that, boys? I'm getting deep dish pizza. All right, let's do this. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, yeah. So be, imagine my own Mario Kart, right? And I think Nintendo has a lot of cool stuff, but I feel like it could be even better if they just added some, like, okay, for example, Nintendo has cool stuff, but they don't have like any online features, right? There's like the that's fine. They're like. But but they're like living in the past. Like they don't use on like they don't use online. Like I don't I don't get it. Like why does Mario Kart in Super Smash Brothers not have good online features yet? Oh my lord. <laughs> why are you looking at mattresses for? Oh my goodness. Okay, let's I think that's probably the best way to do it. Anyway, so my Mario Kart, with my own characters, would have would have competitive online, but then it would also have like the casual mode, right? So for fun, for just like kids and stuff to have fun. But then, you know, anyone who wants to take the game seriously. Anyone? I'm almost done, Kenzie. 
But anyone who wants to take it seriously can just... Anyone who wants to take it seriously can, like, you know, hop in competitive. Oh, frick, I'm dead. Dude, this is the hardest freaking thing ever. Anyone wants to take it seriously? Yeah, cargo cart. Yeah, exactly. Play competitive. Get ranked. You know. And the same thing. What kinds? I, I hear you. Oh my lord. This is the hardest thing ever. Alright. Make it to the end of the course and the stream. Make it to the end of the course and the stream. We can do it. Alright, alright. Oh, okay. And then, uh, final, final words here. Use the same concept and add it to, like, Smash Brothers, right? With my own characters and competitive and, like, everything I want, right? And, like, everything that the people want. And it would be on every console. Except for Nintendo. Nintendo consoles wouldn't get to have it. Because Nintendo... I don't know if you've seen the, like, free Melee stuff. But Nintendo, like, shuts down, like, competitive, like, Melee tournaments recently. Which is, like, super dumb. Oh my gosh, let's go. Alright, alright. Anyway, that's, okay, that's the last thing I'm gonna say. I'm gonna finish this. I'm gonna beat this level right now. Ho, 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 ho. Ho, ho, ho. No! I tried to get the one up, it was a mistake. All right, this is it. Pure energy, pure focus, speed. Okay, okay, I have to get the one up because if I don't get it, then I'll lose my life and I'll have to restart. Let's go. Okay, so we're gonna jump up here, right? Okay. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. Oh. Hello. Hey. I got the one up. That's kind of childish. Here we go, boys. This is it. Woo! All right. All right. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> End of <the> stream. <laughs> Lord. That was hype. All right. I'll probably stream again later. Have a good day, boys. I'm going to get pizza. Oh, look at that. Okay, we have something. We have something to look forward to next time I stream this game. There's a turtle.